Hi, everyone. Um, welcome back for week two of Psych 300. Uh, this is Dr. Sellers again. Uh, we will be covering uh, in week two, chapter two, titled Getting Started in Research. And this week is all about, I guess you could think of the fundamental or foundational stuff you need to know about how research happens or in order to do research. Right? So it's we're, we're looking at a lot of facts, a lot of details, a lot of um, definitions uh, this week that that serve as sort of foundational knowledge for how to conduct research. So things like different types of variables, uh, the differences between samples and populations, how you do some basic statistical analysis and interpretation, how to find scholarly research and scholarly articles. Um, uh, this, again, this basis of knowledge once you have this basis of knowledge, you're then capable of generating your own research questions, research ideas, and conducting research. Um, so just a single chapter this week, again, chapter two, getting started in research. We have a few more assignments uh, than we had in week one. So you still have your personal discussion post that you have to do. And then you have your two peer responses. Uh, your personal discussion post is due Sunday, the 28th, uh, and your peer responses, your two peer responses are due Tuesday, the 30th, which is uh, the end of week two. Now, in addition to your discussion posts this week, you have uh, quiz number one, which is like a stats review. And then you have um, the face recognition experiment that you need to do. This is um, to help you complete the next assignments, which are the mini lab statistics quiz and the mini lab report. So the facial recognition experiment uh, is, it, the purpose here is for you to do the experiment as a participant. So you understand what the experiment is and what is required and how it functions so that then you can take the statistics that you're going to do in the mini lab statistics quiz, which will be based on data from that face recognition experiment, and take that data, do some stats with it, draw some conclusions, uh, and then you're going to write up the mini lab report, which is essentially a condensed version of an APA style experimental paper. Uh, so you need introduction section, a method section, a result section, and a discussion section along with references. But you're going to do all of this in like two to three pages uh, rather than, you know, many, many, many more pages than that that would be typical. So uh, again, I'll go, I'll sort of link through that again. You've got um, a statistics review quiz one just to help, you know, get you up to speed on stats. Then you're going to, to participate in the face recognition experiment so that you can see what the experiment looks like from the inside as a participant. You're then going to take data that are given to you um, from that experiment, and you're gonna do stats on it in the mini lab statistics quiz. And then you take those stats that you conducted in the mini lab statistics quiz, and you use those stats to write up a miniature or condensed APA style lab report or research paper. Now, the, the main sections of this research paper, intro, method, results, discussion, references. In the introduction section, this is where you essentially set up the theoretical rationale for the experiment. So what does the reader need to understand? What background info does the reader need to understand in order to understand the experiment? Um, and understand why you did this experiment and understand what your hypothesis is and what your purpose is, right? So the introduction, you introduce the, the main concepts, maybe the main theories, the main ideas behind the research, and then provide your rationale and your hypothesis. The method section is like the recipe for an experiment. In that method section, you give all the details that the reader would need to know in order to reproduce the experiment on their own if they so wished. The result section, just like what it sounds, you're presenting your um, statistical results. Discussion is why does this matter, right? What did we find? What does it mean? Why does it matter? Who should care? To, to whom or to what do these findings apply? What did we learn? 
Uh, what are the limitations? What's the scope here? And then your reference section obviously is, um, uh, you know, your citations. Uh, anything you use in text needs to be in the reference section. And there's a, a reference provided um, in the materials for the assignment that you need to use and use as a starting point. Um, and then maybe add a couple other references to that as well. So uh, a little bit more going on this week, um, but you know, we're, we're diving right into the experimental process and gonna, gonna make you, um, you know, do the work of, of being a buddy, budding young scientist. Uh, and in that process, really hopefully learn um, the ins and outs and, and again, lay this foundation um, for, uh, for some higher order or more complicated, complex knowledge later in the semester. So as always, if you have any questions, please let me know, reach out, uh, and I hope you have a good week. Thanks.